Are you unfulfilled in your life? Have you done everything that everyone told you you're supposed to do? Gotten a job, done well at school, or maybe didn't do well at school, did a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff you weren't supposed to do, and you still you're unfulfilled in life? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we're going to be talking about why we are so far from what we're actually supposed to do, far removed from our survival, <laughs> that it may just be difficult to be fulfilled in life. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What is up, Randy? You know, this Danny. Is... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had, well, I'll just preface it with where this idea came from. Uh, I had this experience this week where I had to go do a, a thing at a government building and it was crazy because this government building was in the business center of town. And I went down there and everybody, number one, working in the government building was miserable. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, that's miserable. Standard. Like, they were <laughs> the most miserable people, but I expected that. But then yeah. as I was walking there, I was walking in the business district and people are dressed to the nines. like dressed incredibly well like custom tailored suits brand new shoes everything miserable looking absolutely miserable and this was close to rush hour so you know like there was traffic there were lines there was congestion there was all this stuff on the sidewalk and everybody's walking and meanwhile i'm reading this book called deep by james nestor where he was talking about free diving and how like back in some communities in japan back in the day they would have to go free diving to get their food down on the bottom of the sea floor and then they would bring it back and they would eat it and they would be you know like that was basically their day they would go and do this every morning they would collect their food and then they would eat it and have time with their family and it's just like i was thinking as i was doing that i was like here's people in the middle of this big city making an absolute killing in turn financially doing very very well financially but they're so disconnected from their actual survival because, you know, they have this job, they earn the money, then they think they have to buy these things that will make them happy. They buy the food because that food they need to sustain themselves so that they can buy more things so then they can be happy. And meanwhile, so disconnected from survival that they're just miserable. So, Danny, yeah, what were you going to say before I went into that whole rant? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say, you know, it's funny because I, I think about this all the time, how like, you know, we... We are so far removed from everything. Like, you know, like you don't go, you don't like even like just buying food. Like I don't see like, you know, the wheat in the field, how it grows. I, or I don't see the cow. I see prepackaged stuff in plastic wrapped up. You know, everything is like marked. It has everything on it. It has a sell by date. I mean, everything is so far removed from what it actually was originally or from the actual process of making it because we've totally like. I, we've created a society where we, you know, we have all this free time because we sell our time. And yet, I don't know if it's a good thing, you know, at the end of the day, is it? It's really funny because like, you know, in some sense, we have a lot of time on our hands, which is bad because then we can think, you know, and that gives us all this like freedom to think about how miserable we are, <laughs> how we're not, things aren't going well and stuff like that. But it's also like, yeah, it is. It's interesting. I don't know. We don't ever like actually go we don't do anything from start to finish and in completion. We're always, there's always a middle part that we do and that's it. You know, like you don't make the whole thing at work. You make one little part of it. You think of like a factory, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like, we're so disconnected from we, what we actually need for survival. Like when you think about survival, it's like, they say you need like food, clothing and shelter. And I like to add sex on the end of that. So you need four things. Okay. Yeah. Food, clothing, shelter, and sex. But basically Let's let's just assume that like the clothing and the shelter are kind of assumed because you build that once nowadays, you got that. But like the food, you need that every day for the most yeah. part. You can go a month without it, but every day you need food or else you get hungry. And it's just like if you imagine back a, a hundred, a thousand years ago, something like that, if you just were able to get the food so you weren't hungry that day or so that you could survive to the next day, that would probably be a really big win. And then yeah. you would spend the rest of the day around your family or your tribe or whatever it is, your community, and you would benefit from the relationships with that. And that's like your day. That's it. And then I go to this metropolis and everybody's miserable because they have to go do this job that they hate with these people they can't stand to earn money, which is not enough money because clearly the 1% is making all the money and they're not making enough of it. And then they have to pay taxes with that money. And then whatever they have left over, they want to spend it on these, 
doodads, these items that they think yeah. will make them happy, cars, watches, clothing, vacations, uh, technology, all these different things that they think will make them happy because that's what they're advertised to. And meanwhile, not paying attention to the food they're eating, not paying yep. attention to how the food is, is obtained, not paying attention to the relationships of people around them because they're so busy trying to accumulate more money so that they can have more of these things that they think will make them happy. Well, I think that's it too. We get caught up, right, in trying to have more or trying to have enough and there's no real limit on it, right? Especially when you talk about that's the problem with money too. There's no limit on what is, what's enough or what's the right amount because it's constantly changing. The economy constantly changes. The things you need constantly change, right? So it's like there's no clear guideline for that. And this is what I, this is what Marx like identified as like the alienation, right? Like that we've been alienated from ourselves because we've actually like sold labor instead of actually doing the whole process. So it's like, you know, think about it, like. Uh, the only way I know if I can make a table is if I make a table, right? That's how I realize I can do something. And now we don't make a table. A person makes like the nail that goes into the one leg on the one side, right? And that's all they do. Or like you go to work and like you might do something, but like, you know, say program or something, but you only you only do a small part of the whole thing. You don't see the whole completed project. So it's like there's never fulfillment in that in your work. It's always like you're just chasing things. And maybe that's part of it, too. It's like we're, we're constantly like running in circles. We feel busy, but at the same time, everything we do feels meaningless. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like learning to enjoy the journey. So when I, be nice. when I think, <laughs> yeah, like, so like when you think about it, what things do these people hundreds or thousands of years ago need? They needed food and they needed relationships. And that was it. Like yeah. the rest of the stuff didn't exist yet. And so if you think about it, those are both kind of like journey related things because you can't have them forever. They're not like, they're not like this car that you buy and then it just sits in your driveway or they're not like this other thing that you buy and then it just sits at your house. You actually have to work at them and it's in the process of working at them that you get to enjoy them. Like the food is an everyday thing and how, like I can literally say less than 1% of the time, do I actually pay attention to the food that I'm eating? Yeah. Yeah. Not you know? to mention, too. Yeah. It's like, dude, you don't even pay attention to what you're eating. You don't even enjoy it. And then on top of that, like, you know, back in the day, like if you need something, you had to make it, you know, and then you had to maintain it. Now it's like you just go buy it. There's not even that like there's a disconnect between like the things that we actually need in our lives because we're not making them. So they're not specific to us. They're generic. All of them are generic. Right. It's like you buy a car. It's a car that's made for everybody to buy. You buy, you know, whatever clothes. It's clothes that are pre-made. So like. You know, yeah, they might get tailored or something that's great, but like it's not really made for you. It's not made by you. It doesn't fit your specific purpose. So it's like everything is kind of like a little bit removed from satisfying those needs that you really have. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. Like we don't even know what those needs are anymore, probably to a large part because we're so mm -hmm. removed from it. It is kind of weird, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's like a catch 22 because it like gives us a lot of freedom gives us a lot of like comforts that we didn't have before a lot of interesting things but at the same time it's like is it worth it <laughs> yeah i re remember when i was reading uh henry ford's biography or autobiography how he was talking about like <laughs> technology and how the whole idea was it was that it would free up people's time so they could spend more time in nature <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like totally backfired sorry <laughs> <laughs> But also uh, earlier, you were mentioning how there's no limit to money. And that is, I mean, totally true. We see that more than ever nowadays. Like, I remember when when we were younger, being a millionaire was something. Now it's all about being a billionaire. And it's like, what does it really matter? But yeah. for me, for me, I had the most, I think I had like the most eye-opening experience probably about 10 or 15 years ago when I met into, I, I actually just by chance ran into this guy who is like a YouTube sensation and uh, his name is Alex Becker and he did all this SEO stuff back in the day and I was in Dallas and just by chance I ran into him and I recognized him by his tattoos and at the time he was worth like somewhere around 10 million dollars and I was just like oh my gosh like this he this he has it like yeah. this is it he's rich and, and so I was like you know, he was he was saying hi and clearly trying to get away from me being a fanboy yeah. and everything like that. But, but I was like, like I, got I was like, I was like, dude, what's it feel like to be rich? Like this was the most important thing to me because I thought that like once you had money, once you were rich, that was it. 
And I, so this was like burning question. Solve all what the problems, do, right? Yeah. What does it feel like to be rich? And without batting an eye, he's like, feels the same as to be broke. And it like, it literally shattered my mind. I like, I, I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. I was like, how is that possible? I know everybody mm-hmm. says it. I know Will Smith has said it and Jim Carrey said it and everybody else has said it, but they're just saying it for TV. Like you're an actual person. What do you mean? It feels the same as it does to be broke. And it's just like, yeah, you're the same exact person before or after. Maybe you're amplified. Maybe you can do more. Maybe you can arrive at your problems in a nicer car. But yeah, yeah you still have those same. problems. And you know yeah. what's funny too? It's like, um, like I think we make the mistake that we think that like, because money, when you're totally broke, money does give you freedom up to a point, right? Like it does. Because like if you can pay your bills and stuff, you're freed from the stresses of that. If you can eat when you need to eat you know these simple things that are necessary it does free us there but we we make the mistake that like more money equals more freedom and it really doesn't a lot sometimes it equals more constraints more work more stresses more whatever you know and like worry yeah more worry you know (laughs) about losing it yeah (laughs) yeah. all kinds of things i think it's like we we may, we we kind of delude ourselves. We imagine that it'll be perfect. We have this idea of like it'll be perfect when we have this, we have enough. But it really it doesn't change anything because it doesn't change us. And that is the fundamental difficulty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So another thing that I was thinking of with this whole like uh, we're so distant from our survival is like any time that I actually do get out there and I do work, like even I don't know, like any type of yard work or fixing up things in nature feels good (laughs) or just camping dude there's like this satisfaction that comes from it that can't be found from a whole day working in an office no matter how much you do oh dude i know like dude going backpacking and stuff or going out and just going hiking you just feel great and it's like then you come back and do all this stuff and it's like that you don't even want to do necessarily it's it is it's really funny that we it cracks me up that we've accepted this as like the way things should be you know does that make sense I actually remember reading one time too. They thought like, what was it? Um, I think they were t- they were talking about because uh, hunters and gatherers, uh, like they they said like I think it was something like that. Most of their time, you know, it, hunting and gathering didn't take up that much of their week. Because yeah, you think about it, if you have a small tribe, you kill a big animal. It's like probably enough food for a while, like for like a week or something. And like, so they had a lot of time just to kind of hang out and like rest, and enjoy time, you know. Or like you know, have you ever seen animals? Like you know, you look at lions. You know, what are they doing most of the time? They're just lounging around, you know, together, hanging out. They're not really doing anything. And it's like, I think we kind of like, we've made it so that we're busy all the time, but it's like, it's like made up stuff that doesn't really matter. We make all these stresses so important and they're like really not that important. And they're not Mm -hmm. about, like you said, they're not about survival. Like, it's like, if you miss that meeting, nobody's going to die. It's not like missing, like you didn't kill the animal and now you got to (laughs) go get another one because you won't eat today. It's just mm-hmm. like, it's like very low stakes, but we make it such high stress. Mm-hmm. Very Dude, Here's another shocking thing. <clears throat> so like, we think that technology has improved our lives. I mean, anybody who actually thinks about it knows technology is very life force. But <laughs> yeah. we think like, yeah, technology is so much better, especially social media. Like I can, I can relate. I can stay in contact with people. I can like be up to date with everything that's going on. So I was just reading this book called Like War, all about the weaponization of social media. And basically, the number one emotion that drives social media by an order of magnitude larger than any other emotion on there is anger. I knew that. <laughs> anger. Absolutely insane. So like this, this great thing that we have is really just propagating anger. Yeah, because you know what, though? That's... Dude, they have all these very smart people, psychology. They have psychologists and stuff on their staffs that figured this out. They're like, first of all, emotions keep you doing something, not not reason, not connections, emotions. And anger is like the print. Look at look at the news. Why do you think the news makes everybody so pissed off? Because it's like the number one it, the thing is to get people angry so they stay doing it. Mm-hmm. And they stay like, you know, watching it and everything like that. That's all it is. It's well, crazy. Yeah. And then and then it like it multiplies because there are people who are angry at what happens. And then there's the outrage. And then there's just this whole loop of like outrage porn about people yeah. getting angry about yeah. other people getting angry. And it's just like, it's like, when are we going to stop jerking each other off and just be like, okay, we need to like lay off social media. Just stop. You know, it's funny too. It's like with that, I remember watching a thing where they're talking about how like, um, 
how like politics has become like uh they've even made that into like you know like sports like uh you know you have a team that you're rooting for and like so every day like there's wins and losses and like you want your team to win every day and all and they've made politics that now too the way they talk about it in the news because it keeps anger up but it also keeps people like on their team you know kind of thing mm -hmm. and it's like so funny because we also it's like it promotes divisions it promotes thinking like you're part of the group or part of this group and everybody else is against you you know it really is it really is like such a terrible thing <laughs> for like yeah. our mental health and relations yeah and here's and here's the really cool thing for all the uh the i guess americans who are very pro politics and everything like that is that most of the narrative is swayed by russian botnets state-sponsored yeah. russian botnets how cool is that you think you think <laughs> democracy and free speech and really you're just being swayed by some russians which is very cool yeah yeah it's awesome <laughs> yeah 90 yeah. of stuff on social media is like fake anyway it's just made up mm -hmm. it's crazy it yeah. is interesting you know it's like it's very interesting how like that's i think that's the other problem right we've we don't have any like we don't do anything that really satisfies direct needs anymore so instead it's like power money these have become like the big thing and getting them however you have to is all that matters mm -hmm. instead of like you know a good life happiness you know <laughs> balance well i'm glad i'm glad you bring up the good life because this is something that i did want to kind of touch on here is you know number one i wanted to talk to you about you know going through the artist's way again together because i think that'll be fun oh we could if, do that yeah if you're up well, for good. it yeah yeah, and sure. number two would be, is it possible to follow your heart to the good life? Is that is that just like this like woo woo type of thing where people are just like, yeah, just the secret, just woo woo, you know, like just think yeah. about what you want, and it'll happen. Or is it possible that maybe like your heart knows what's going on and you should just follow it? Follow your know. bliss. I don't think we think about it enough or we don't listen to it enough. Cause you know how many people do stuff that just makes them miserable all the time, you know? And it's like, Me. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder that a lot too, though, because it's, you know, like, it's like, you know, like there's, there's stuff that you might like or something. And it's like, you know, could I, could I, you know, how many times are like, there's something that you like and like, you could probably make money doing it, but instead you just like, don't because like, oh, it'd be too hard or it'd be too difficult. Or there's too many people doing it already. And it's like, so you don't even try. And I think that's like one of those cases where like you're not following your heart or you're not listening to like what might actually make you happy. And I think we all have to get better at this, but maybe it's part of it has been that we were so disconnected from ourselves and so alienated that we don't even recognize it. You know, it's like um, that Martha Beck book that we read when she was saying like a lot of our clients would come in, they'd be tired as heck and like feel miserable and sick. And it's because they hated their job and like they didn't want to go. So their body was trying to tell them not to go anymore, stop, but they keep mm -hmm. going anyway. And it's like, that's just killing you like slowly it's like torture you know and so i do wonder often like you know why don't we listen more to our bodies because they it does have information obviously like our emotions our feelings they're all important maybe not to like get caught up in totally but like to at least listen to and help guide us mm -hmm. yeah i i've recognized recently that there are some things that like i want to do but i'm afraid to do them because i'm like what if it doesn't work out yeah that's a weird one isn't it because it's mm -hmm. the fear that it, there's also the fear that it will work out which is also i find very paradoxical as well like well if it does work out then i gotta do this forever so, you know it's like or you make it <laughs> there's also i also like there's certain things too that i really love doing that i i would i think about sometimes like pursuing but then i'm like well wait if it's about money then well i would like it as much or will i still want to do it you know if it's about like your income and like your life is it better as a hobby it is hard to figure that out yeah it's it's kind of crazy because i can look back to my life and there were times when when i just had i i can't even explain it better than just saying like i had a paradigm shift in my head or something like that to where i like yeah. slowed down stopped like doing just like doing things that i hated for one, I mean, some of them were times when it was like thrust upon me or some some of them were times when I just made a choice that I would stop. But like, it was just like I had such a shift. And then I just started following up, like almost following my bliss. Like, what would what would I like to do? And they just worked out better than I could have ever imagined. Yeah, because like you want to do it. 
and like you you have more i mean dude like it's so funny but i've noticed that like anything that i want to do I, i'm way more inclined to do it every day i'm way more inclined to have energy doing it there's always and like it's it's anything else like anytime you commit to something there's always going to be parts of it that maybe are hard or days that are difficult but if you really want to do it you're gonna you're more likely to do it the next day too whereas if you don't want to do it you're not going to you know and, or it's going to be really like you know what's that saying like uh cooling teeth you know to like actually get it done kind of thing like it's just and it's funny but like yeah i've been trying to do that more myself because i think it is it's got to be the route to happiness right and like mm -hmm. finding the time to ensure that you can do the things you want to do not getting caught up in the bs of like the everyday and like you know this these made up pressures and these made up stresses and these made up like obligations that society puts on us like having enough and having this and that and like what do i really need you know, that's the other difficult question, I think, that goes with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should follow yeah. our hearts more, though, I think. I think that's a good point. <laughs> it could be good. It does, it does kind of make sense. Like, I've been I've been journaling a whole bunch about it recently. Like, if I wanted, you know, the next year or something to be about something, what would it what would it be? And just and also, like, I, I had to very very consciously not censor myself while doing this because that's I, hard just, isn't that funny <laughs> dude, i'm just i'm just like you know writing just to get these ideas out and then an idea would come in and i'd be like nope and i'm like no i'm just writing these ideas down like it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah how weird is that i've done it so many times where like i'm journaling something i'm trying to get something straight and i'm censoring myself as i'm doing it it's crazy and like, it's really weird when you have to consciously stop yourself from doing it. Cause it's like, first of all, no one else is going to read this, but me, <laughs> like barely anyone can read my handwriting anyway. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I struggle with it sometimes. It's like, you know, it's Same. like, it's not Same. like anybody <laughs> can read it later anyway, but it's like, so what am I worried about? It's so funny. It's like, what if I actually write it down that it's going to be scary because I have to do it? Like, and that goes back to your point of like the fear of actually working out you know, or actually, and which is a weird one, right? Like you might actually be happy. You won't have to have these problems. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like we've known it all along. We just don't want to listen to it. I think that's like true of so much stuff though. Like, you know, I think, I think that's a, that whole thing, like follow your heart too. Is like, you know, we do, most of us probably deep down know who we are and know what would really make us happy. We're just so afraid of doing it or we're so afraid of being happy or we're so afraid of like whatever that we just don't do it right we deny it it is kind of funny yeah yeah why wouldn't like we that. know we are the person you know you're yourself <laughs> if anybody mm -hmm. knows it should be you yeah so it's there's also this whole idea of like having to have it figured out like maybe we don't have to maybe exactly where we are right now is exactly where we're supposed to be like there's this one guy there's this one guy that i keep running into i i, I have a chat with him like once or twice a week and he keeps like literally the first thing we say, every, the first thing he says every time we talk, he's like, oh, I really need to make a decision. Like, I'm really struggling to make a decision. And it's been going on for probably a month. Every every time we meet, he's like, so oh, don't I really make a decision. need to make a decision. <laughs> and I'm like, and every time I'm like, but but do you really? Like, you've been saying this for, forever. This is the only thing you say. You're like, is it okay to not make a decision right now? Like, clearly it is, but it's just like... It's, it's worked maybe... for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's just like, uh, maybe where we are is exactly where we're supposed to be. Yeah, but you know what, though? I think that's also from... I think part of that is also from being younger and people telling you that you're going to fail if you don't have things figured out, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have this or that. And like, I don't think you necessarily need one all the time. Because it sometimes you know the best ideas are born from when you have time and you're bored or you don't know what you're doing, you don't know which direction you're going, you're trying to figure it out. Those are like the, the sometimes the best times to to get those ideas. But you have to be in that state, dude. I feel the time pressure, like no joke. I feel the time pressure, like I have to do something right now, even though it's not true. But I feel <laughs> time pressure, like. The to be where I am right now to be able to do the stuff that I'm able to do, especially with like changing careers, that's something that I worked for, for a very long time to be able to like be in this position. But now that I now that I'm here, I feel this incredible time pressure that I have to get to the next step. Like I have to get that 
I have to be fully changed in my career. I'm embarrassed every time I'm telling somebody yeah. that I'm changing careers. They're like, yeah. what, you're not working? And I'm like, yeah, like, lay off. Yeah. <laughs> Plan for this. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it is, it's funny, though, because it makes you feel, well, it makes you feel like, you know, you're failing in some way, even though you're not. Like, you're doing fine. And it's like, but, but we dude, all feel. I mean, it's totally social pressure. They're like, you're 40 yeah. and you're not working. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> so what? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, mom. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> right uh yeah. it's funny mm -hmm. it is well that is the pressure though right it's like you have to be doing something all the time instead of like you know because that's what cracks me up too when people change careers and they act like you have to have like it if you have the time to stop and actually make that change correctly that's the best way to do it why would you do it any other way that's absurd mm -hmm. you yeah. know like and why would you why would you stay in a career for your whole entire life if you don't like it like yeah that's or if absurd. there's and if there's nowhere to go and if it's terrible, yeah, it just makes no sense. Like, makes no sense. I don't understand it. Yeah. It is very hard, though. It is. It's social pressure, though. Social pressure is terrible. It also is why I think people don't follow it, don't listen to their hearts, because there's so many other voices and so many other talking heads. And they get so insecure about whether they are, you know, it, it's hard, right? You get insecure about whether you're right or you think you're wrong, even though you might be right for yourself. Because everybody else is telling you you're wrong. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to know what to do. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Yeah. So I guess I guess we're just disconnected. And the only way to deal with that is to become more connected. Reconnect, right? Yeah. Probably the best idea. <laughs> and here's the cool thing. You only need to connect with right here. Right here and right now. This moment. Hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. I still, I mean, every almost every day, I still read the Marcus Aurelius Four because, yeah. dude, it's like it's such an amazing transformation from like whatever BS I'm telling myself about trying to figure out all of my life's problems right now to just being totally like, okay, I'm cool. It's just let go of the past, yeah. have faith in the future, love what is, and act right. And it's just like, wow, that right there just changes everything. You know, it's funny, too. It's like, and don't be so hard on yourself. Because, like, you know how many times, like, I've been trying to relax or something, and I'm like, I got to do this. I got to do this. Like, it matters if I do something that day. I got to, you know, you can do it the next day. Relax. Mm -hmm. You know, figure it out, and you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It is crazy. Yeah. Uh. So, in a nutshell, that's why we're so far from survival that it's difficult to be fulfilled. But we yeah. just kind of figured out how to be fulfilled. So everybody should be fulfilled by the end of this episode. Without yeah, a doubt. you should figure it out now. Now it's good. Yeah. And if you <laughs> want some more of these amazing episodes that are just going to blow your mind, change your life, and just set you up for the course for everything you imagined you'd have in this life and the next, then you should check us out on <laughs> YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. This is the Existential Stoke Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy. <laughs>